Hi, this is Charlene Burke with Grow Because You Know. That's www.growbecauseyouknow.com. Welcome to Morning Mindset Cafe. Today we are discussing the book, Success Through a Positive Mental Attitude. This book was written by Napoleon Hill and W. Clement Stone and is a different look at success principles. I happen to have a hard copy published in 1969. The book itself was originally published, just so you know. Wait, 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 hold it. Wait for it, 1960. We are at the end of chapter two. Those who are here on the program live, the PDF is available to you for a download. If um, you're interested in other success mindset resources for free, downloads are there. Hmm. What else have we got? One other thing is because this is on Blab and Blab just really doesn't care that somebody has scheduled something and wants everybody to find it. This is where scheduled programs on a weekly basis will be in the links to the Blabs will be there. Go there, bookmark it, check it out in the morning. That's, that's how I'm coming to my Blab. I'm going to my own scheduled Blab page and coming in that way. I haven't seen the front page for a day or two, so I don't even know what that looks like. Because it's not that important. Chapter two is titled, You Can Change Your World. Well, number one, I love that it's titled that I can change my world. I'm always a little put off by people who say, I want to change the world. Because my first thought is, what if I don't like the changes you're going to put into effect? Then we're going to be at odds, aren't we? Then we are going to, yeah, and good luck with that. But again, that, uh, there's a lot of people that actually say that. My goal in life is change the world into one of loving unity. It's a wonderful aspiration. Truly it is. But I don't like you, so why would I want to be unified with you? Think about that for a second. So that's why I like the title of this chapter is that I can change my world. You can change your world. All right. Now, this portion of the chapter that we're in is about definiteness of purpose. And that's the title of today's Morning Mindset Cafe. Definiteness of purpose. See, that's different than just saying, I'm setting a goal, isn't it? That's different than just saying, um, for this particular project, this is what I'm going to do. We're talking about definiteness of purpose. And we're told that combined with PMA, it's a starting point of all worthwhile achievement. Remember, your world will change whether or not you choose to change it. Think about that for a second. Your world, my world changes whether or not I have a part in it. We deal with change constantly, don't we? Because we're surrounded by people, places, and things, and they're doing their own stuff that affects what's happening in my world. So how about we do this? Let's take a look at definiteness of purpose, combine it with positive mental attitude, and we participate in the change in our own world. Because we now have the power to choose the direction we want our world to go. You can select your own targets. When you determine...
determine your definite sigh. I'm back. Thank you for waiting for me. It's on my side. Literally, my connection just decided to go away. Thank you, Catherine. I missed you too. All right. In here, I was, let's get this day started. And here's something I'm going to share with you. You can start your day over at any time you want. Now, I started the program three minutes ago, five minutes ago, ten minutes ago. And I need to start over to a point, right? But my attitude can start over any time I want. It could be three o'clock in the afternoon. And I decide I'm starting over. Take a step back, take a breath, start again. So when you determine your definite major aims with positive mental attitude, there's a natural tendency to, for you to use these seven success principles. To think about this as you've you've now decided your definite chief aim. You have personal initiative, personal initiative, self-discipline, creative vision, organized thinking, controlled attention, controlled attention, concentration of effort there, budgeting of time and money and enthusiasm. Bob Christopher had definiteness of purpose with positive mental attitude. And let's take a look at these tendencies, these natural seven tendencies come into play. His imagination was stimulated when he read Jules Verne's story around the world in 80 days. He says, I used to daydream a great deal, but when I grew older, I read two books on motivation, Think and Grow Rich and The Magic of Believing. Around the world in 80 days. Now, why couldn't I go around the world in $80? I believe that any given aim could be accomplished if I had faith and confidence that it could be. That is, if I started from where I was, if I start from where I am to get where I want to be. So Bob thinks, hmm, others have worked on freighters to earn their transatlantic passages and hitchhiked all over the world, so why can't I? There you go. Takes a fountain pen from his pocket. In our days, it'd be an ink pen. Writes down on a note paper a list of the problems that he anticipates he's going to face. Then he makes note of what he thinks are workable answers to each of those problems. All right. We're looking at personal initiative, creative vision, organized thinking. Mm -hmm. Now, Bob Christopher is an excellent photographer and he does have a camera. It was a good one. So when he reached a decision, he went into action uh, first. He enters a contract with Charles Pfizer Company Commercial Laboratory to collect soil samples from the various countries he intended to visit. He has a contract to work that will help him to achieve his goal around the world on $80. Then he obtains an international driver's license and a set of maps in return for a proposed report on Middle East road conditions. Hmm. A little bartering there, right? A little bit of a project there. He went and picked up some Siemens papers. Then he obtained a letter from the New York City Police Department to prove that he had no criminal record. Then he arranged for a youth hostel, men um, youth hostel membership. Everybody understand what a youth hostel is? If you don't, we can talk about that in a minute. Contacted a freight airline, which agreed to transport him by plane over the Atlantic on his promise to obtain photographs which the company intended to use for publicity. Hey, you know what? I have a feeling that he was putting to use. I, I read it and I saw it. Personal initiative, uh, creative vision, organized thinking, already doing some budgeting of time and money. And that bartering that he's doing in exchange for passage, in exchange for papers, in exchange, and a little bit of exchange for money. So when his plans were completed, at 26 years old, he left New York City by plane with $80 in his pocket. Around the world on $80 was his definite major aim. He had many experiences some of which included he rode a bus to Damascus and a policeman in Syria was so proud of the picture that Bob had taken of him that he ordered the bus driver to take him. Got a free ride. 
He arrived in Vienna from Paris. The fee, one carton of cigarettes to the driver. Um, in Bangkok, the owner of a very fine restaurant fed him like a king, for Bob gave him the information he wanted, a detailed description of a specific area and a set of maps. Maps, be willing to barter, be willing to have a conversation, be creative. Creative problem solving, right? Around the world in 80 days? No, Bob didn't do it. He went around the world in 84 days. But he did accomplish his objective, and he went around the world on $80. And because he had definiteness of purpose with positive mental attitude, he was automatically motivated to use the additional 13 of the 17 success principles to achieve his specific goal. How motivated do we get when we set our eyes on the target? So the starting point of all achievement, this is the starting point, is definiteness of purpose with positive mental attitude. So let's ask ourselves, I want you to ask yourself here at this point, what is my goal? What do I really want? Based on the people that were seen by Napoleon Hill and W. Clement Stone in their uh, Positive Mental Attitude Science of Success course, it is estimated that 98 out of every 100 people who are dissatisfied with their world simply don't have a clear picture in their minds of the world they would like for themselves. They drift. They're dissatisfied. They're struggling against many things, but they don't have a clear-cut goal. Can you state right now what it is you want out of life? Right now, can you state it clearly? Fixing your goals may not be easy. It may even involve some painful self-examination. We've talked about that, haven't we? Painful self-analysis, self-awareness. A realization that you thought you were doing things right and it wasn't working for you and having to admit maybe just maybe I might want to do something a little different but here's the key it may be painful but it's worth whatever effort it costs because as soon as you can name your goal you can expect to enjoy many advantages and these are what are come automatically when you can name your goal. The first is that your subconscious mind begins to work under a universal law. Please tell me you've heard this before. What the mind can conceive and believe the mind can achieve. Because you visualize your intended destination, your subconscious mind is affected by this self-suggestion. It goes to work to help you get there. This happens automatically. And in some cases, automatically, according to some people. Because you know what you want, there is a tendency for you to try to get on the right track and head in the right direction. You get into action. Work now becomes fun. You're motivated to pay the price. You budget your time and your money. You study, think, and plan. The more you think about your goals, the more enthusiastic you become, and your enthusiasm and your desire turns into a burning desire. Yes, it's true. It's happening to me with one of the things I'm working on. Become alerted to opportunities that will help you achieve your objectives as they present themselves in your everyday experiences because you know what you want, and you're more likely to recognize these opportunities. Oh. You have success born in you. Notice that none of the people that we've talked about to this point had success handed to them on a platter. Each, each one did it by developing the many talents they found within themselves. You had Bob with photography. We talked about Fuller. With his sales ability, he didn't go to sales training. He went out and just started selling soap and started honing his own skills, right? And there's another story in here about somebody who was able to write and write very well and took that talent and one skill and expanded on it.
<clears throat> it's interesting to know that life never leaves us stranded. Isn't that interesting? Life never leaves us stranded. If life hands us a problem, it hands us also the abilities with which to meet the problem. Our abilities vary. They do as we are motivated to use them. And even though we might be in ill health, you can nonetheless lead a useful and successful and happy life. And we have a story about somebody who overcame ill health and how positive mental attitude helped, helped a man who was stricken with extensive paralysis and confined to his bed to realize that he was a mind with a body that he really didn't need the physical attributes of his body. And when he saw that, that's when he realized he could make choices of how he felt and how he saw the world and what his attitude would be. He chose to be hopeful, optimistic, happy, and to convert creative thinking, convert creative thinking into reality, but by starting right from where he was, not getting hung up on the past, but starting right where we are right now. And he wanted to support his family. He wanted to be useful. Remember, this guy's paralyzed. But he, how could he turn his disadvantage into advantage? Remember, we're talking about positive mental attitude, aren't we? Negative mental attitude says that disadvantage is what's going to keep him from doing anything. Positive mental attitude says, how can I turn this into an advantage? And he found the answer. First, he counted his blessings. He discovered he had so very much for which he could be thankful. And this thankfulness led him to search for additional blessings that he might enjoy in the future. And because he was searching for, among other things, a way to be useful, because he was searching for it, he found and recognized it. It was a plan and it required action. So he went into mental action and he revealed the plan to members of his family. He's no long, I'm no longer able to work with my hands, he began. So I've decided to work with my mind. Every one of you can, if you will, take the place of my hands, feet, and physical body. Let's plant every tillable acre of our farming corn. Then let's raise pigs and feed them the corn. Let's slaughter the pigs while they're young and tender and convert them into sausages. And then we can package and sell them under a brand name. We'll sell them in retail, retail stores all over the country. And he did. And within a few years, Jones's Little Pig Sausages became a household brand. And those four words became a symbol that tantalized the appetites of men, women, and children throughout the nation. He lived to see himself a millionaire. He had achieved something even more, though, through a positive mental attitude. He had flipped his talisman. He had gone from negative mental attitude to positive mental attitude. He was happy because he was useful. A formula to help you change your world. Self-motivators, <laughs> okay? Here's the thought. There's a story called I Dare You. This is what I'd like to end my portion on. I Dare You. Remember, okay, what a mind can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve. It is a form of self-suggestion. It's a self-motivator to success. When it becomes a part of you, you dare to aim higher. Bill was a sick, Bill, sickly farm boy in the southeastern Missouri country. Dedicated grammar school teacher motivated young William Danforth to change his world. And the teacher did this with a challenge. I dare you. I dare you to become the healthiest boy in school. I dare you became William Danforth's self-motivator throughout life. He became the healthiest boy in his school. Before he died at the age of 85, he helped thousands of other youths develop good health and something more. To aspire nobly, to adventure daringly, and to serve humbly. During his long career, he never lost a day at work because of illness. I Dare You motivated him to build one of America's largest corporations, the Ralston Purina Company. I Dare You 
motivated him to engage in creative thinking and turn liabilities into assets. I dare you motivated him to organize the American Youth Foundation. Its purpose is to train young men and women in Christian ideals and to prepare them for the responsibilities of life. I dare you motivated William Dansforth to write a book titled, I dare you. Today, this book is inspiring boys, girls, men, and women to have the courage to make this world a better world to live in. But I say right now, I dare you to look that up and read it. What a remarkable testimony to the power of a self-motivator to develop a positive mental attitude. Are you, yourself, ever tempted to blame the world for your failures? If so, pause and reconsider. Does the problem lie with the world or with you? Dare to learn the 17 success principles. Dare to memorize self-motivators. Dare to apply them with the full assurance that they will work for you just as effectively as they are working every day for hundreds of others. Perhaps you don't know how. Perhaps you, perhaps you need to learn to think more accurately. All right, so I'm going to give you a couple of things and thoughts to steer by. You can change your world. This is a summation of this, of this chapter. You can change your world to achieve anything worthwhile in life. Use the positive mental attitude side of your invisible talisman. Imprint the 17 success principles indelibly in your memory. Do you tend to blame the world? If you do, memorize this self-motivator. If the man is right, his world will be right. You were born a champion. You have inherited from the vast reservoir of the past all the potential abilities and powers you need to achieve your objectives. Identify yourself with a successful image. What will your picture say to you? Listen for the answer. Definiteness of purpose with positive mental attitude is the starting point of all worthwhile achievement. Have you selected a specific goal? When you determine your definite aim, there is a tendency for several additional success principles to begin to operate automatically. Everyone has talents for surmounting his special problems. What special talents do you already have that you can develop? And then the formula that has helped many to change their world. What the mind can conceive and believe the mind can achieve. Have you memorized this? I'm going to take it one step further because I'm quite familiar with that statement. I just never applied it to myself. How about you? Take it one step further. We know that statement. How many times have we heard that throughout my entire adulthood? Referenced it with Martha, Martin Luther King during one of his famous speeches. And yet, and yet, didn't take it for my own. So I dare you to take it for your own. Catherine is saying her real goal, although we laugh that she wants to change the world and world domination, is to be recognized as the purpose expert, helping others unlock their uniqueness and pursue that uniqueness to the extraordinary life. She goes on to say that her first best friend, her best friend, I'm sorry, your first best friend, I don't know where that came from. She says, my best friend opened up his own tree company, then fell out of a tree <sighs> onto his head. He's now in a wheelchair, but he continues to find ways to build his business, provide opportunities and be for others and be a blessing. Thank goodness for that. Say welcome, Karen. It's good to see you. Hope you are doing well. Good morning to you. So, do you have a definite purpose? Do you have a major chief aim? My core is based on my belief that knowledge and education is foundational to freedom. 
whatever you define freedom as. You need some knowledge, you need some education. My purpose is to help you attain that in a variety of ways. Hence, the name of my personal blog is Grow Because You Know. And some things that are coming up and what I will be doing to support that now that I have the right tool are, and that works so far, are webinars, you know, in addition to, this is my free program, right? This is where we discuss and we learn from each other. And I'll be doing webinars that um, will go a little deeper about heart matters, about how to grow your heart, how to grow your mind, learn something new, right? Learn a new skill or a tactic. Um, let me look at my list. And we'll dig in and learn a new tactic or a tool. We'll look at ways to change our mindset. Look at my list. Been there for a couple of years now. Because I've done these. In a different context, heart matters, focusing on inspirational things, and then business matters, what it takes to run a successful business. And that all springs from my definiteness of purpose. My definiteness of purpose is knowledge and education is foundational to freedom. And I am here to help others to attain knowledge and to be educated and informed and learn how to put it to use. What about you? Do you have, are you able to state it? Are you able to say what your definiteness of purpose is? It's amazing when you say that, right, Catherine? Because you say you have your real goal is to be recognized as the purpose expert. So when you have that, I, you know, I'm, I feel enthusiastic because I know that's something I believe in. That's what I want to do. I've gotten creative about, well, how am I going to put that out there? How's that going to look? And I did get creative about it because I was having webinar programs that just like weren't working for me. No, I wasn't using Blab. I was using others. So I was doing it in small, small pieces, right? And I was collaborating with others on what they do. And, um, have been since I wait since I started my business it's all been behind the scenes meaning I'm not I wasn't doing a lot of personal self-promotion a lot of mine was in the background and featured guests and things like that this is this is the year that I've been coming out front and more personal promotion Catherine saying the first time I said I am the purpose expert made me nervous but an excited nervous and just making the step, making the statement help me take action. Yes. When I was able to state that my core belief is that knowledge and education is foundational to freedom, it explained what I was telling people all along, which is that knowledge is power. And people come back and say, yeah, well, just knowing something doesn't mean anything. You've got to put it into action. Well, duh, but you can't put into action till you know. You don't have anything to leverage if you don't know. You have to learn something before you can put it into action. Otherwise, you are literally like the hamster on the wheel. Whoa, you're going fast. You're doing a lot of action, but you just ain't going nowhere. Right? All right, so other thoughts. I'd love to see what other people have to say. What do you think? Can you, you don't have to share your goal with us, but can you at least state it to yourself? Do you have a definiteness of purpose? Do you believe that it can happen? Remember, I mean, we were talking about that simple statement that we all know what the mind can conceive and believe the mind can achieve. So saying your dream, your ultimate purpose, what you've decided you want, saying it and not believing it's possible, it's difficult to go into action on that one, isn't it? That's where positive mental attitude comes into play. 
because we believe anything is possible. If we understand the success principles, we understand that truly anything really is possible. And when we say that I'm limited by my own thinking, this means that I may not be able to see how it's possible, but certainly that does not mean you don't know how it's possible. When I understood that is when I had a huge breakthrough for myself. When people always talk about your limiting beliefs, your mind is what holds you back. It's your own thinking that holds you back. Anything is possible. And I would say, well, not all things are possible in the realm of reality, right? It was all about my own thinking, what I thought my own capabilities were, and well, and that I just didn't see how something could be done. And yet when you get somebody with a, specific, a particular skill set, you can get a master carpenter who can build things that I can't build. Of course things are possible now. Of course that kind of house is possible. He'll figure out a way because he has the skills and the knowledge to do it. I don't. But why can't I use his skills and knowledge to build, build a house, an office, a space? See, I don't have to do it. And that's what the success principles teach us is that we can, we can access each other. So Catherine referencing when she first said, I am the purpose expert, making her that excited, nervous. She says, when I get that nervous feeling again, when I picture that becoming my reality, but I will keep saying and keep taking action until it becomes a settled idea within me. Yeah. I had to get used to the idea myself of what it actually looked like. I mean, I, I knew, I always knew what my core belief was, but taking action on it and expanding it so that it meets my ultimate goal, which is to live in the RV with my husband, traveling the North American continent, and basically being a traveling knowledge center. Yeah, I get excited when I think about it. I could take off right now. I really could, you know, jump in the RV and with access to the internet, being able to, when I say knowledge center, talking about let's just sit and talk about philosophy I'm talking about sitting around a campfire and discussing a book like this and, and introducing people to new ideas and to maybe trying something new yeah something as simple as that helping somebody learn how to access the internet there are still people you know that don't use the internet because they don't know how they really are yes Showing somebody, teaching them how to do some things online that they've never done before. Teaching somebody how to read. Yeah, I, <laughs> I get excited. So Karen says, I was just thinking that anything is possible, but some things won't always happen. Yes. You see, you're the one that sets the site. You're the one that sets the destination. You're the one that sets the target. And then there always is the, just because it's possible doesn't mean it really should be done. Catherine's saying, I know it's my core belief because I get so fired up when I get the chance to talk purpose and share purpose and help others with purpose. And that core excitement speaks volumes to what your core why may be. Oh, I'm with you on that one. Yeah, it's difficult to shut me up when I'm when I'm sharing with somebody and we're talking and we're learning each, you know, I'm especially when I'm training, you know, here's something new. Let's explore it together. You know, help, let me be your guide. Let me walk you through how to do some things. And then you go, oh, and then you go off and do it. And the light bulb comes on and says, oh, that works. Yes. I get it. Yes. I'm perfectly okay with you determining your own purpose. 
I really don't know how to help you do that <laughs> other than to refer to this book and share my own experience. But you see, there's other people like Catherine who's, whose purpose is to help you find your purpose, to walk you through, to guide you to a point where you can say, yes, I know my purpose. I know what I'm going for. Just because you're good at it or have the education doesn't mean it's your core why. Oh, yeah. You can apply those to your core why, but until you find it, you're going to struggle. Yes, into the steps of an in. You're going to struggle uh, to step into an extraordinary life. I fully agree. I mean, I, I have an educational background in business and marketing. That's from the 80s. And then in the 90s, I decided to go back to school. And so my educational and training background is in electronic engineering and robotics. My core belief is not that robotics is the answer to everybody's problem. Everybody needs to know robotics. But I'll tell you what, when I was a field engineer and I was troubleshooting, I was fixing problems on site and I was educating and informing the customer along the way, I was noticed by others and I was asked to become a trainer within the company because I believed that the more educated and informed our customer was, the more they understood how to operate the equipment and the more responsibility they felt to maintaining that equipment, the less costly it was for us to be on site fixing the equipment. It all works together. Because that really was what led me in everything that I did, in, be it in business and marketing or in um, whatever capacity I had that, or as a field engineer and my, one of my favorite jobs as a design engineer, quite honestly, when working with a customer to determine what it is that you really need. You know, oil refinery, we need mixers for our refining systems. Sounds simple, doesn't it? once it's designed and then installed and I'm along the way in the entire process, except not on site installing, then talking with the customer about how and why we actually designed it this way and what to expect and how to handle things when those expectations, expected issues occurred. Right. So everything, regardless of what I was doing, it was always led by my belief that you need to understand, you need to have the knowledge and education in order to do what needs to be done. And I believe that today. That's why I do training programs. That's why I do um, workshops. That's why I facilitate mastermind groups. That's why I do um, some group, you know, no, I don't do group coaching. I do group trainings. Um, give you the knowledge, educate you. Because once you have that, then you can make choices. You can you you can make decisions because you have choices. Um, I mean, I have this, I'm about ready to write a really big blog post. Oh yeah, really big. It'll probably be about five, maybe 200 words. Knowledge, why knowledge is power. It gives you choices. It gives you access gives you information that you didn't know, gives you the ability to make better decisions, the ability to improve yourself. Knowledge gives you the ability to improve the lives of others. Knowledge becomes a part of you and it can't be taken from you. It simply cannot be taken from you. I encourage you to learn something new so that you can see the world in a new way. And then I encourage you to teach it to somebody else and that way you can change your world. That's my stuff. Keep sharing on the side here. <laughs> what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Definiteness of purpose. Point is not for you to change the world. It's for you to change 
your world. That's doable. It's a lot, it's a lot, a lot more manageable too, actually. Don't get nearly the uh, obstacles as you would in changing others or trying to. Yes. You can influence others. They're the ones that have to determine if they want to change. But you can change your world. And that's what we're talking about here. Good morning and welcome, Green Travel. Do you have a name that you would like me to call you? <laughs> welcome. Donna. Hi, Donna. Nice to meet you. So other thoughts about um, definiteness of purpose combined with positive mental attitude. So if you're stuck on thinking the big stuff, like what I just shared, that's a pretty big core value I've identified that um, pretty much motivates me as to why I do the things I do. What about the project you're excited about? The one you're excited about now, when you decided that that was the project you were going to focus your attention on. Did you notice, first off, that enthusiasm that came into play, that bit of excitement? And then you had some initiative, right, that helped you to say, well, hey, let me make a list of what needs to be done in order to get, to get what I want here, right? And while you're making the list, you're seeing that you're going to have to budget a little bit of time and money, but you're willing to do that. It comes naturally. And those are the success principles that come into play. Yes, there's more. The ones that are automatic that happen because you've made the decision to do something, to get something to define what it is you want to achieve right now. Now you're ready to do it. Pretty cool, huh? All we're doing is just breaking it apart so that we can identify what it takes because now we can see why we might not be so excited about something that we've gotten ourselves involved in. Once you know, right, once you understand, then you can make a decision whether or not you're going to stick with that project, stick with that team, stick with that business, stick with that particular destination in mind. And you decide, oh, wait a minute, there's a reason why this this isn't jiving well with me. It's not lining up right. I'm just, I'm not as excited about it as, I'm, as I could be or as I'm seeing others be. It's, um, yeah. Then you can make the decision to stick with it or not. At least it's informed, right? At least it's informed. Welcoming any thoughts. Related to definiteness of purpose, positive mental attitude, what the mind can conceive and believe the mind can achieve. That's what we've been talking about this morning. What else have we got? I keep looking down because I know I'm going to be dropped off the internet any minute now, dropped off earlier. And I'm watching the uh, watching the router. It's like oh, you're making the you're making the same signals here. All right, so I'd love to know your thoughts. Invest some time this weekend making a list of the things that you dreamed as a child, the things you love doing that is a benefit for others, and the things that others comment that you do well. That's the beginning of discovering your core. Very nice. Thank you, Catherine. So how about I do this? I dare you to do that. I love that. I dare you to spend this weekend and make, make a list of the things you dreamed of as a child. And those are the things you love doing that is a benefit for others. And then the things that others comment that you do well. 
I dare you and Catherine double dares you. And somebody's bound to double dog dare you any second now. <laughs> yeah. I dare you. It's in your head, isn't it? Something is sitting there saying, that's really what I've been wanting to do. That really is something I've been wanting to do. Um, I just haven't put it out front yet. Uh, maybe it's time. You know, maybe it's time to put it out front. I want to be the 2% that are successful. I want to be part of the 2% that are doing things and moving forward and have momentum and um, feel confident in what I'm bringing to the world. And I've always wanted that. <clears throat> I personally have always wanted that. It's the ability to do it that was mixed up and the how, but that started revealing itself and it got scary. I was having to do, and I'm still having to do things that can make me very uncomfortable but I'm willing to do them because they will get, they are the, the way to getting what it is that I want. And sometimes in some instances, by facing the fear and doing it anyway, I learned that I actually have an ability and a skill that can be honed and really didn't take a whole lot except just getting past the fear. The fir that first one was public speaking and public workshops and appearing on video like this. It was, took me seven years to start doing video like this. Been in business eight years this month. <clears throat> yeah, took seven years to get me to do video like this. But I did it, didn't I? So Catherine is, is saying the beginning of discovering your core requires freeing the imagination, the imagination, because you have to choose to make this list without considering the limitations. That is an interesting exercise, isn't it? One, one thing I can offer to that is think in terms of what if, or why not? It's not that you're writing this list because it's the list is everything that um, you're going to do. Just write the list. That's all you're asked to do. That's all. Just write the list. Am I right, Catherine? Why not is better. Yeah, it's just a list. It's an, <laughs> that's all. It's just a list. Any other comments, thoughts? Yeah, don't complicate it. <sighs> Have somebody I'm working with now loves to complicate things. Loves to complicate. Here's the task, write a blog post. Over four weeks have gone by now. Nothing's been posted yet. <clears throat> Why? Well, <laughs> every excuse possible has come up. Oh no, it's like, actually, there's a lot of writing that's gone, but it's random writing. There's no organization to it. So it really isn't oh, it's anything you would want to share with anybody. And I agree, it was like a mind dump, you know? Maybe I should do video. Maybe I should do uh, a video blog instead of just write it. I don't care. The task was to do a blog post. It was originally to write a blog post. Perfectly okay to do a video. Put it in the blog and publish it. Oh, still haven't been done yet. Donna's asking, if you could give one piece of advice to someone who has big dreams and a strong entrepreneurial spirit trapped in poverty, how to achieve their dream business, what would be the most important thing to tell them? Mm -hmm. 
So the success principles tell us there's great value in other people. There's ways to use other people's money. <clears throat> so what I would tell that person, you have a big dream, a strong entrepreneurial spirit, which tells me that you're willing to do the work to make the dream come true. Trapped in poverty. No, you're not. It all begins up here. You are not trapped in poverty. You start where you are right now. Where you are right now is you have the dream, so you have the idea. You have the willingness to do the work to make the idea happen. Your only limitation at this point is money. If that's the case, then it's time to start looking at other people's money. Okay, Catherine, is that to me? Oh, I've given I've given the client everything he needs. I'm telling you, he's <clears throat> he's stuck in his own his own head. He's never blogged before. He doesn't have a following. Nobody's going to see the blog. Here's the kick. He doesn't have a following. Nobody knows that this website exists. But it's the first stop to teaching him that if you follow the directions and do the work, amazing things will happen. Until then, until then, nothing is going to happen. So he needed to know what actions do I take in order to achieve this final outcome, this final goal. And we're working on that. But the first task is to write a blog post and publish it. I'm not reading the blog. I'm not reading the deed. I'm not reading anything. It is him. Honest to goodness, I am not kidding. He would have accomplished that task had he put up a quote by somebody and then wrote three lines to say, I totally agree with this quote. I've had it work in my life and published it. So again, he says this is what he wants to do. He says this is where he wants to go. He's complicating the bejeebies out of it. And we, even when I say you're complicating this, it really is simple. He's getting in his own way. All right. Uh, Karen's asking, what's the purpose of blogging? Never understood it. Catherine's saying it's a way to build your platform on real estate that you control. It allows you to provide information to others and engage them as well. It provides a, a platform for credibility and a level of authority. You can read my blog at www.growbecauseyouknow.com and some of my blog posts at searchbyberk.com. Um, oh, no, you can't. I took those down. And then I have some fun ones at charlingberg.com. Um, it gives you insight into me, but it's a way for like-minded people to find each other. And when you're in internet marketing, of which I am, it is an excellent way to stay top of mind when it comes to the search engines or an excellent way to stay top of, of uh, bot land, if you will. How would they convince other people to invest their money into their dream when they are starting with nothing? Ah, well, again, you will, um, Catherine is saying this, and I'm wholeheartedly behind this. You will be amazed at what passion can do. If you have a plan that's specific and defined, others will like the focus and get on board. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's story after story. We write about it in Think and Grow Rich, Law of Success, Using Other People's Money, um, Success Through a Positive Mental Attitude. We'll get into that in uh, probably another two or three weeks, talking about how to use other people's money. Um, yeah. That's one of the reasons why, you know, <clears throat> um, my business started. 
mine started with other people's money in June of 08. I actually received the money um, earlier. I received it a couple of months earlier. Uh, had some of my own money. But somebody, somebody was listening to, me, listening to me talk about what I was getting into, why I was getting into it, and how excited I was about it. And I did have a plan. And they said, I'd like to help. Oh. So I outlined what that might look like. And they said, okay. And wrote a check. I said, thank you. Other people seek it out looking for like-minded people to participate. Oh, yeah, I did a happy dance, and then I just about threw up because, oh, crap, now I'm in business. I don't know what to do because it's the scariest thing in the entire world. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean, we have we have the guy here, um, Dave, right? Dave, the upcycler. He, he now has the target of the people he's going after to invest and partner with. Took him a while, and he started refining it, refining it, refining it, refining who he was going to go after because he started out pretty broad, didn't he? And then those of us that know him. And now he's refined it down to these are the, the two people, private owners of big businesses, that I am going to go after to partner with me in terms of raw materials and distribution for my upcycling idea. He's already in business and then he, he's got a plan that's, that's being fleshed out and he had his dream and then started coming together. I haven't talked to him in a while, so I don't know if, if, if he's gotten the investment he's been looking for. So yeah, start looking for like-minded people, Donna or whomever it is that you're talking about, if you're working with somebody else, get them with like-minded people, people in the industry that you want to be in, people who are associated with the industry that you want to be in. Not necessarily the people doing things that you're not doing, right? I mean, there's, um, the first step is going to be believing that there are people out there. And the next step is saying, I'm gonna go find them. And then those seven, that's going to be your definite goal, isn't it? And then those seven principles are going to start coming into play. You've got some enthusiasm now. You have the focus. You've got um, your own budgeting of time and money on how you're going to find these people. And you're going to be open to seeing them because now they start appearing before you. That's pretty much how it works. All right, so we've reached the top of the hour. I'm going to close out this portion of the program and leave the room open for us to have further discussion if anybody wants to do so. Thank you for being here with me this morning. Thank you for the conversation and chat to the side. Those watching the replay, thanks so much for hanging with us this long. This is Charlene Burke with Grow Because You Know. That's www.growbecauseyouknow.com. Let's move forward with the day on purpose with purpose to grow our hearts, grow our minds, grow our businesses. Until next time, have a great day.